Some say that this year is the most beautiful 911 there is. And we have it here today on Autogefühl, the new Porsche 911 Targa. Today as the Targa 4S. We also have an older model for you, just as a showcase. Of course, we'll concentrate here on the all new model in this new generation, in exterior, interior, and the driving experience. Of course, here, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. Join us here, as usual, in full HD, full screen, and full length. Let's go. The new 911 generation in general for all the models is four and a half centimeters or about two inches wider so even wider stands on the road yeah it's not a small sports car anymore more a grand gt definitely so the original 911 more resonates now meanwhile to the 718 model here you can see here there's the targa 4s you can see the wide air intakes also horizontal stress then LED is standard and an option you can see them here the matrix LED light also for more elaborated high beam function You have this retro elements here how the hood is curved out in the new 911 generation and the targa of course from the front doesn't look so much different It's more of course in the side profile and with this glass top and What's also interesting is this color with the different light nuances here. It's called gentian blue or would be Enzian in Germany. Not exactly a bright Thomas blue color, uh, but it really depends. You can see here when the sun is really hard on it, then it gets brighter. A sapphire blue would be more the Thomas blue here in Autogefühl, but definitely also a beautiful one. 4 meters 52, 14 foot 8, or 178 inches is the length now of the 911 generation and from which side I will enter the stage yesterday. <laughs> from the front. Here of course the Targa with the signature bar right here, silver contrast. I think that really really works well to the blue exterior color and then these typical 911 very strong shoulders. The base Targa version, the Targa 4, always by the way comes with all-wheel drive, comes with 19 inch wheels in the front and 20 inch in the rear. This here is the Targa 4S, so the S model then 20 inch in the front standard and 21 inch in the rear and then of course it's all about the roof opening process you can see here this you know the the glass area very beautiful and this makes this car really so unique and i can also open it with the key there's a separate button here on the key so here we go and always looks very spectacular this soft top then goes back parts of the bar move up move down again and there it goes back with the glass top. So this is actually 19 seconds, whereas the normal convertible would be 12 seconds. So of course the convertible is more, you know, the more practical solution, has also a little bit less wind noises, but the extra price if you compare it to the coupe, both for convertible and for the Targa, at least in Germany, 14,000 euros extra. So it's not a question of price, more of styling and of course, of concept and of course if you're even cooler then you put down the windows and that gives once more a different look especially from the side again in the rear the new 911 generation also has some retro styling elements here very interesting and this light strip here it goes all the way over the vehicle so from the rear i think actually yeah this is actually really really cool in this new generation i like that the targa of course also in the rear perspective with this huge glass top also again very impressive and it looks the same 
no, no matter if it's open or closed and in the middle. In the lower part, you have the outside exhaust tip. So, yeah, hard case for the auto fuel fake exhaust police because you look on the inside, there is, you know, something on the inside then with two gaps and then behind this then is the real exhaust. So, yeah, the air goes through there, but still, I think a case of fake exhaust, definitely. What do you think about design, the new Targa? Is it the most beautiful 911? Tell us in the comments. And technology-wise, by the way, you have a rear axle steering optional. This is also built in this very vehicle. And then there's also the anti-tilt control PDCC. You can get both. And then you have, like, you know, the most dynamic driving setup. And again, the Targa so far only available with all-wheel drive. Of course, as we know from Porsche, with rear-wheel bias. And maybe you've noticed this. One, two, three, four, five, six seven eight nine two nine so either nine nine two for this model generation for the internal code or also nine eleven you know like nine eleven so no matter how you read it it really fits and at higher speeds the spoiler goes automatically up or of course you can also do that statically like here when you want to show off to your friends for the normal 911, there's this service opening which only folds up this part here, this very small part. But here, the service opening looks a little bit different than for the Targa. So, here we go. <laughs> the whole uh, glass top lifts up. And then you can see the only thing you can actually see from the engine, if you don't put it to the workshop, here the 3 liter 6 cylinder turbocharged. Either with 385 horsepower, this flat engine in the base Targa, or here the S model, 450 horsepower. And the acceleration figures are 3.8 seconds or 3.6 seconds for the faster model. That's 0.1 seconds slower if you compare it to the Coupe model. The key fob, slim and light, 911 form. And you can open the frunk from the inside of the vehicle or here with pressing on the key fob. 135 liters is the official figure and of course a 911 is not safe from the measuring stick <laughs> here about 60 centimeters in the rear height then here 45 in the front and in the lower part here is almost 70 centimeters in width and that means you can put a cabin trolley you know you can lie it down but also question is when you put it up like this to be able to store something else in there. Will it close? Yes, that works. People buy the Targa to feel safer or because they think it's better as for the wind turbulences, but usually the pure convertible is better as for the wind flow. But Porsche wants to improve this now with a new, let's say, interior spoiler or a new wind deflector. You can see it right here. So this is directing the wind flow a little bit higher over the cabin and it's a manual control so for even higher speeds you can press it down like this here we go and then the wind flow goes even a little bit higher than at higher speeds and i'm really looking forward to test that while driving if this is really a crucial change then it looks just minor but will it have a big effect we'll find out soon and we also have a different color for you today. This is called Aventurine Green, so you hardly see that it's green. Just to give you a different impression here from the front or also then from the rear view. The short look into the past for you. The Targa history began in 1965 when American safety regulations actually forbid to sell normal convertibles for overrolling safety and then these bars were introduced and the Targa was born. So 1965 was the very first Targa model. This one here is a model from 1993, a very precious one, has just been here in the Porsche work state and about 3000 kilometers on the clock. So very, very precious one, 250 horsepower at this stage. Big difference today, of course, to a Targa 4S with 450 horsepower. And a short look inside and also listen to how the door plops open. Yeah, that's classic sound. <laughs> so, looking at the inside and I want you to look at this interior and then later on compare of how many elements they have carried on to the modern models. Always interesting to see where they come from. What do you think about this one here?
always a discussion here with the door handles when you open the vehicle here with the key or close it again you can see they come towards you it's also better for the wind efficiency um, but the feeling they give you yeah i'm not the biggest fan of it but they look cool at least then inside of the door here slim porsche design that means also very very slim door pockets here hardly can put anything in there memory seating one two three hmm. will you allow two more drivers in your porsche not so sure about that <laughs> 911 targa 4s entry batch and we have a gray interior today you can see here also front of the you know, steering wheel and so on small and very precise shifting pedals that's cool soon more to the instruments because you have digital left and right and analog in the middle part right side middle 10.9 inch screen at the moment shut off but soon more to the screens and so on the seating here sport seats as standard and look out for the sport text seats so there are also some retro styling fabric seats available i would pick these here the animal skin seats not so many alternatives as we know for example from the new Taycan or also the 780 models offer more alternatives than here the 911 models so let's get inside here we go typical low seating 911 position and indeed it doesn't feel like a you know small agile sports car more again like a grand gt um, you really feel how big the 911 has become and here at the moment with the top open but i can soon also close it first of all the seating position i mean the 911 was never a comfort king so to say um if you want more comfort in Porsche, that's why so many people are buying the Porsche SUVs. You know, meanwhile, Porsche SUVs sell way more than the sports cars do, exactly for that reason. But of course, we'll keep you also updated for that with the driving review. At least you can adjust them um, here in an electric way. Up and down, of course, front, back, then here. Lumbar support and also the front bolstering here to put it longer than the side bolstering in the lower part. And here you can adjust it very well. But... Of course, it you know it won't change the basic driving position. So, steering wheel, also electric control, up and down and in and out. And you can also get one with the steering wheel heating. So that's one of the options that this car here also has. But um, in some Porsche models, it's hidden here behind the steering wheel. In this case also, just a little bit more hidden here in the 911. So here, actually, so there it is. So it's really just behind it, a um, little bit easier to to activate it in the Panamera, for example. Yeah, but I mean, if you know it, it's actually a good thing where you don't see any additional button. Yeah, why not? Interior overview, again with this horizontal stress, and there you definitely can see some, you know, resemblance also from this traditional 911 layout. So that's, I think, pretty cool that they take some, you know, citations and then soon also more details here to this instrument setup the problem is when i sit here from here you can see there you know behind the steering but from my view this here and this is blocked by the steering wheel that's also some kind of a design flaw but i think it's really cool that they kept the analog rpm meter right there the steering wheel again nice small good grip shifting pedals on the right side here you can control the white the the, the right screen right there and you can also switch it, that you can control the left instrument screen also. You can pick up, pick up the phone. Drive mode selector, practical on the steering wheel. They can switch between the different driving modes. There's also a new wet driving mode for slippery conditions, but with the all-wheel drive here, also not such a problem. And on the left side here, you can turn up or down the volume. You can have a favorite key that you can you know, put something on it. And there's also a voice input. Um, but this is not like a super natural voice input as we know from very modern system and this is a button here for the voice input and that works actually quite decently drive me to berlin please wait a line number please so that works well already i'll cancel it for a moment and another one increase temperature down here there it is so when it went from 22 to 24 degrees of course way too hot than here but just for testing purposes then further here another hot key you can 
program a favorite button uh, right here, so whatever you want to um, have on this key. Then to activate the exhaust node once more, also separate key and nice metal knurling here. ESC off, yeah, maybe on the racetrack. And PDCC, so there's always discussion about why is there a separate button for that. And the reason is PDCC, the anti-roll control, if you have this option, is always on. But when you use this one or automatically in a certain driving mode here in the Sport Plus, then it is more on. <laughs> it's just a little bit more active. So then also cool that we still have manual climate knobs. This nice clicking sound. And then this brown shaver <laughs> design here for the shifting lever. And, you know, zzz in the morning when you forgot to shave. <laughs> It's slim and I mean, meanwhile I got used to it, I have to say, parking mode. Then to open a closed Targa top, here the seat heating cup holder right there, also adaptive. And you can also remove it if you like and replace it with something else. And then the armrest, you can put it up like this, some space and two USB-A chargers. Now it leads to the infotainment screen and I mean, my microphone is really you now uh, catching my voice only, but you can maybe hear that I have turned on the engine because when you use this screen here, it drains so much energy from the battery that after a while, or well, very shortly, it shuts down and then you have to turn on the engine. That's definitely a flaw of this car. So, here is the GPS map. This works very well. This screen, by the way, when it's hot, it really gets hot. I almost don't want to touch it. Then phone connection with Apple CarPlay in this case here. Wi also wireless is possible. Here's the integration. Yeah, doesn't go wider. That's a bit the map then. Soon also testing a sound system. Here you also have sound settings here for the Bose sound system. For example, more surround sound or something. And what's always cool is this car menu because you can, for example, open the spoiler. I've done that earlier. Put, yeah, more exhaust sound in there. <laughs> this automatically happens, for example, also when you put it to the sports mode. Here at the steering wheel, boom, boom, boom. Or then again, you know, with a separate button here in the middle console. And also here with a nice Targa visualization. Now the instruments. Again, middle part analog, but just a digital speed. Right side here. You can pick the different driving modes or have the visualization for the different driving modes when you turn them at the steering wheel. And there's also here all-wheel drive distribution. We can talk about that when we drive the car. You will see rear-wheel bias then. And when we really hammer the throttle, then it more goes equal to get more power to the ground. And here the map integration is, of course, very helpful then when you have a GPS route set. So, and then on the left side, you can have assistance system information, for example. There's, again, another speedometer. Um, so, not too much to change right here. It's more than about the right side. But overall, I mean, it's quite nice, these gauges overall, if you can see them all. Oh, and can't miss this analog clock in the top of the cockpit. Always nice to watch it and gives you maybe some serenity. Tick, tuck, tick, tuck. <laughs> and then there's this weird passenger cup holder, um, which is always a little bit, yeah, weird, as I said. But at least it gets cooled then also from this air vent. And this vehicle is also equipped with the optional Bose sound system. Let's have a sound test and I also closed the roof for that just for comparison um, purposes with other vehicles. Yeah, I think it's nice and the typical from Bose that we always have a little, little bass heavy sound. So if you like it or I mean if you don't like it that much you can also tune the bass a little bit down but definitely also nice surround sound and later on while driving we can also turn it up while driving, why not? And Porsche promises us that the sensor would actually block the roof from opening, for example, in this case, to touch that flower. Let's see. Ah, there it is. See, it started, and then the sensor acti actually realized it, and here, it says here, obstructions in swiveling area restart movement. So, the flower is safe, and our <laughs> hardtop as well. And this, of course, more a case of, you know, when you're somewhere where you didn't see any, like like a, a barrier or something, you didn't see it, and then actually your car is safe. So for the sole purpose of amusement and to enable comments like 906 Thomas in the back seat, <laughs> I'll do it.
So here you can put this seat forward and you can see I cannot possibly fit in there when I have the driving position with 1m86 or 6 foot one You have isofix here for a child seat, that would work. And you can also fold down these seats to protect them and then you can put a bag just on top of it. So that is actually possible. The only thing that would be conceivable is, you see here on the other side, I put the co-driver seat, and yes, I use co-driver seat, rally terms, always intentionally. Yeah, I put the seat that way in the front that I could still sit on the passenger seat and then I can actually try to get inside there. Let's try that. Let's go around. So we will we'll be able to fit at least, you know, three adults here. Let's see. Put them up. You got, and by the way, there's like a, um, you know, yeah, very small storage there, but I'm not sure if I would use that really. So. Here we go. That's of course really tough here and nah. Um No. <laughs> yeah, one of the rare cars where it really doesn't work. It's not meant to work. It's also no problem here with the Targa, even harder to fit in here. So um yeah, probably as for the rear compartment, the least practical 911. Closing the top here works with the middle console and yeah, this should work with the roof above us. So you can see it once more in the live process here. Always spectacular to show off in front of the, you know, restaurant or something. And then in the front here with the headroom with one is 86 or six foot one. This is no problem. Plenty of headroom left. Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge with the Porsche 911 Targa. And what is this car for? It has a lot of power. Yes, definitely. We'll also show you an acceleration, but this car is more for pleasure, enjoyment in the sport way. Yes, but of course, open top. And it's a car where you say like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a gentleman. I don't need to exceed the speed just to feel cool. And however, we can still use the sports mode to have a little bit more Exhaust note, for example, that's really cool. Um, and of course, instantaneous acceleration always when you want it, even if you don't need it, so to say. And of course, it's a cool experience here. What's a little bit strange is then when we opened it, the Targa roof, there was still like a gap here in the window. And then usually you would just hold a button, for example, also with the convertible, and then the windows go all the way up. But that didn't happen, so I had to then low, uh, put the windows up here with the normal window levers, the last step. That's a little bit complicated, I think. Also, another drawback of the Targa roof is you have to be standing still to operate this heavy glass roof, of course. With a convertible, of course, you can then just drive up to 50 km an hour, and that's definitely way easier. So we got some nice corners ahead still, and this car has such a precise steering. This is, to me, the best about this vehicle definitely sound is quite nice also but the sound has never been like the strength of the 911 these flat engines they are um, pretty reliable but they are not like best sounding or so so it hasn't been like a like a roaring focus or so um, here at you know slower speeds of course you don't feel any wind uh, resistance difference between targa and the convertible um, this will more be applied to higher speed, but we can also test that. And again, this new wind deflector here, I can really feel that here. Um, you know, even at slower speeds, you feel how, how the wind affects that. So this is definitely a very interesting thing. And when we drive a little bit faster, then we can also put it in this second position we shown you earlier to see what, what the difference is there, actually. So really looking forward to that. So we're also going to go where we can drive a little bit faster. And the suspension here is of course set on a very sporty note. So it's always that you feel when there's some bumps in the road, yeah, it can get really, really rough. However, then when it's plain, then you have the great sporty feeling. So yeah, it's always the question then what you need, what you want and so on just have to be aware of that. 
comfort wise you can get it a little bit better if you stick with the smaller wheels for example so that would be maybe an advice to stick then with the non s model the non s model also has definitely way than enough power so we'll just turn it around here see also how the car can be handled turning circle wise and so on steering is not too hard then there's the rear view camera it's resolution could be a little bit better right yeah Jonas agrees so for such a very expensive vehicle resolution should be better from the rear view camera and yeah, by the way we can also then start it from zero here there's no one around here and just sport plus and the interesting thing is here um like this. <laughs> that was 0 to 60 kilometers. Just like instantaneously. Not allowed to drive faster even though it would, wouldn't hurt anyone. Of course we always stick to the rules. There was a launch control. <laughs> Just put it to like sports plus mode. Hit the brakes, hit the throttle, got the launch control running. So here with the Porsche it's probably the easiest thing to do a launch control. Um, yeah, a lot of fun, of course. Always think about your passengers. Jonas really like he has like iron stomach. Jonas, sometimes I call him that way because, I mean, we've been like to so many racetracks all all over the world, and he's like, oh, okay, it's quite fun. When I would be in like in his position, I was like, more, more, all over the place. <laughs> so yeah, that's up to Jonas for uh, enduring that. Now 50 kilometers now to 100. Let's see. Uh, Alan, safety first, motorcyclist. Now. Plop, that's it. Wow, such a good acceleration. And now we feel the Targa disadvantage. 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour, and it's really loud in here. A lot of wind noise. You can probably also pick it up on, on the microphone. And this is not like such a high speed, you know, the car convertible would handle it better. Now, let's check out this new deflector. Okay. So, I mean, you, I'm not sure if you can pick that up on the camera microphone, but it is louder now from this deflector in the front on the one hand, but the wind turbulence above the head, let's see again, changing. Interesting. So what it what it does change is um, without without like in the lower position um, you have like a like bum, 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 like this more wobbling sound. There's like a bigger wind turbulence, and then when you put it actually then to the to the other stage to the higher stage, this is reduced, but then you have like a more I would call it a high frequent wind sound from the upper part. I know this like from this air cap system by Mercedes. I don't know, what, what do you think? It gets a little bit brighter. The sound is getting higher frequent sound, yeah. Yeah, yeah, higher frequent sound. It's like, it, it's a different wind noise, but it's still a wind noise, you know. Um, interesting that they added something there still not like I would say like wow best feature ever you know and here now at 80 kilometers an hour it's definitely better you know so this but you know with the convertible you can easily drive 100 kilometers an hour on, on uh, 60 miles now on the motorway so here again I have to say Targa is limited in this in its capabilities at some point you know it's more like countryside road 70 kilometers an hour you know like 40 45 miles an hour that's cool with the target then as well or maybe like inside the city going to a restaurant or so on and then you're able to open the top but probably then the target will be driven more closed than open whereas the convertible at least for me you know I'm a convertible fan and I always drive convertibles more open than closed there are hardly any situations where I would drive a convertible um, really closed you know so um, yeah but definitely very interesting to experience that but Porsche did realize this problem therefore they um, they have added this new feature right there um, yeah but definitely interesting so the uh, the performance of course once again very cool 
Yeah, it's raining though, just a little bit. Not sure where that is even coming from. But you know, with open top vehicles, when it's raining, you're just not driving uh, fast enough. <laughs> you just have to drive fast enough that you push the rain in front of you. And I hope. <laughs> I hope I, I stay right for this one. So, but so far, it's it's quite cool, you know. So once again, you think you are safer with the Targa. Well, maybe for overrolling, but the modern convertibles also have roll bars that pop out, so you're also safe with that. Um, the only thing where you're not safe is when like right, like a tree branch falls onto the road and it hits you on the head or so. And of course you're safe and a coupe in a way, but yeah, depending on how, how heavy the tree is, the coupe also won't protect you. Protect you. Um, here now, 80 kilometers an hour. Yeah, like I said, 45 miles an hour or something. That's still okay, yeah, that's variable. Um, but still there are more wind noise than from the convertible. However, the agility of this car is really superb. Every single lane change is so much fun. You can easily take this one out to a racetrack, even though when it's not like a super turbo S thing or something. Um, so that's no problem at all. And then every low speeds feel like the car is like bored, you know? So the car says like, come on, Thomas, I can be driven way faster. What are you doing? Well, no. <laughs> so. Therefore, you also have to watch out, you know, speed cameras and so on and so on. Fuel economy, by the way, is very, very bad. So even though when you don't do acceleration tests, um, when you just cruise this vehicle at least 12 liters and one kilometers, if not more, and that's more like in this 20 mpg region, can be a little bit less than 20 mpg. So it's a sports car, yes, but it's, you know, should meanwhile be a little bit better, shouldn't it? Yeah, you can always argue that people buying this car won't care, but more and more people, of course, also care about fuel um, economy, even in this car. And even if you would just say, like, I don't want to go visit the fuel station that often, of course, at some point, it also does matter. The gauges here, by the way, are very interesting as well, because you can also, you know, not only see the different driving modes, you can also check the all-wheel drive gauge, and there we can see most of the time we have rear wheel drive and just maybe a little torque at the front and the more I hammer the throttle the more it goes to the front wheels and uh, when we would have seen it for example during the launch control then you would have almost seen like a 50-50 distribution because it doesn't paint tire on the ground when we do a launch control you know it really gets all the grip in a very controlled way to the ground that's what the launch control is actually for. Here now, cruising at slower speeds, that's where the car, Targa really feels at home. You know, people looking, hey, what a cool car, nice color, contrasting, oh, there's also nice Alpha convertible. You know, like the silver Targa bar then, and you can just enjoy life. It's, the Targa is really, to me, more a design object. And the very interesting thing is also that the residual values for a 911 Targa are always the most stable from the whole 911 range. Um, that's also a very interesting thing because it's always a little bit more rare, it's special, it has something unique, but it's just a design thing, it's nothing logical because, yeah, I really have to say from a factual, logical standpoint, indeed I have to say that the target doesn't make sense you know you want to drive open top with the best wind features and so on most enjoyment take the convertible if you don't care about open top driving then you would take the coupe the Targa once again doesn't drive too different to the other 911 versions definitely but the Targa to me such a beautiful design object but driving wise from the you know, different features doesn't really justify it on the logical sense, you know. But that's nothing where Porsche was <laughs> always always good at. It's of course more for the motion. And close top acceleration. Let's put the Sports Plus. Hey, and then 50 kilometers an hour to 100. Let's go. <laughs> wasn't even shifting. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
okay, you know, I really, really love the 718 uh, and I would prefer it over the 9, 911. This is something where the bigger engine definitely plays a role, but you know, the 718 also available again with the bigger engine. But I mean, yeah, situations like these, the additional horsepower, of course, definitely helps. So, Sport Plus mode here, by the way, also shifting down with this throttle blip. Really cool. Double clutching, you know, in the next roundabout. This is a lot of fun, you know, just some roundabouts and you still have a lot of fun then just in your everyday driving life. And driving a little bit with the closed top, what is remarkable is that you have a lot of headroom, we showed shown it earlier, and it's really also a conceived difference then to the convertible and to the coupe driving because you have literally a little bit more space above your head so it's more open and more you know traveling experience um, we, we feel that here when, when driving with the closed top so um, also has a special unique character indeed so and of course it's way more silent than with the open top that's um, just natural and even at higher speeds, the difference is then not that huge to the coupe, only if it would be like really, really, really very high speeds. That's the same nowadays with the uh, with the convertibles. So um, the differences between the hard tops and the soft tops, not too much anymore. Of course, when this one is all closed, there's also like a very good wind flow over the car. Of course, it has been thoroughly tested in the wind tunnel as well. In general, once again, here a nice, crisp, direct steering feeling. That's one of the best things, definitely. When we talk about noise insulation, it's also good at higher speeds. But then again, we feel in this 911 generation that they have to fix some things as for like rattling noise and stuff. Because, for example, the steering wheel in one of the earlier cars we had, there was the, like, you could squeeze this part. This has been fixed now, by the way. So you see, they do realize these things. but. In the um, most recent convertible drive, also like something from the you know, left behind my ear, like you know from from the rear part there, there needs to be some part that is shaking or something. So um, you do get some noises from there. So um, and to be honest, I would not expect that in a 911. Um, the suspension, by the way, here the PASM adaptive suspension. But here, then also with the 21-inch wheels in the front, uh, sorry, 20-inch wheels in the front, 21-inch wheels in the rear. It's of course very cool if you like cruising and stuff. But then again, it can be quite rough at times when you running over bumps or so. Sports mode, of course, always nice. Here then with the exhaust sound that automatically gets activated in the sports mode and such a pleasant ride once again so here left and right again so precise this steering so this is one of the things where you really feel one with the vehicle then that's also the you know probably the reason you you buy the porsche 4. so the targa has always been about this mix of enjoyable experience closed and also open and yeah i mean i can definitely um confirm that once again um, you are somehow more flexible in the one hand. Some say the Targa combines the best of both worlds. Some say it combines the disadvantages of the Coupe and the convertible. You can argue both ways, and it will be true in you know in any case. You know, um, to me, it's really more about the styling. The convertible would also be a great ride when it's closed. Um, so yeah, it's it's more like a. Um, philosophy decision, I would say. And now to our conclusion for today with the new Porsche 911 Targa. From the exterior, you can actually say it's one of the most beautiful 911s, if not the most beautiful. I also think it works very well with the contrasting Targa bar, especially when you have a color like this. And of course, the 911 always with this very, you know, wrapped tight design has been the same case throughout the ages the targa definitely is a great design object and also showing for example with 
very good residual values. From the interior styling is also a very you know sporty one with the instrument view. Yeah, a little bit blocked, you know, some floor as for that. Then of course a lot of animal skin use here too. Just barely some alternatives there in the model lineup. So that's better with the 718 or with the Taycan actually. The Comfort is also not the best. It is more a GT car, but for a GT car, I think it should also be a little bit more comfortable seating position wise. The suspension, especially when you pick the 20 inch wheels front, 21 inch wheels rear, which is standard for the S model, is still a little bit stiff. So it is definitely more a sports car. Although you might expect more comfort in comparison, for example, to the 718, the suspension really tells you, give me a good road and then I give you a lot of driving fun and not the best comfort. Well, and it is actually a lot about the performance still. The engine, no doubt, you always have a lot of performance. It's always there, no matter at which speed. And of course, the very crisp and, pre and precise steering. This is so much fun with the 911. And they could increase this sportiness here even further with this new generation. Of course, also the rear axle steering helps, also the PDCC, for example, the anti-roll control. So, especially the rear axle steering makes the car feel even a little bit smaller, better in a turning circle, so it's easy to ease the car around, actually. Talking about the Targa and the wind features, if you decide between a Targa and a convertible, do yourself a favor and pick the convertible because when you open top driver, you will have more fun with the convertible. They did increase it here a little bit, you know, with this uh, new small wind deflector. This is reducing this low frequency wind noises and more puts into high frequency wind noises in the front. This does improve a little bit, but still the convertible will have the big advantage. So open top driver, get the convertible. This is more if you decide between the Coupe and the Targa and just find the Targa more beautiful. Yeah, fuel economy wise, by the way, I could drop it down to about 11 liters or more kilometers. So that's a little bit more than 20 mpg then and like 25 mpg for the UK figures mpg. So yeah, should also be a little bit lower actually. Still very interesting impressions here. We also tried to mix it up a little bit open and close driving in the driving part. I think we have a lot of fun today together with this beautiful design object. Comes with a catch, but also comes with a lot of emotion. That's, you know, what the Targa has always been, like you see it here. Which one would you take home? This or this? Yeah, uh, this actually should be half the price approximately as it is here right now as the 4S, at least 145K and with some more extras, 160, 170 thousand euros. Yeah, that's what you have to pay for the new one. What do you think? Please leave us your feedback in the comments. Let's discuss the 911 Targa. Please also tune into other episodes. We have different 911 episodes, Coupe, Convertible, 911 Turbo S. We see you there or next time in our full review. Bye and thank you.